It's Travel Tuesday and the day of another episode of Hip Abroad. Hashtag le monologue du voyage. For those who don't speak French, it's a little joke as the pod is a dialogue based one. I'm not having a conversation with anyone, but don't despair. Some episodes with interviews are in the pipeline. But I think it's a cool hashtag, so please use it in social media when referring to this podcast. And I will spell the, the way in the description. So, where are we? Yes, we are going to Nicaragua and why you should go. Underrated compared to Costa Rica, so I would like to support their tourism and inspire you to visit. Known as the land of the lakes and volcanoes, Nicaragua is pure beauty. It is located between the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, which make it very diverse in terms of population, culture, food and activity. You have an amazing scuba diving spot and snorkeling on the Caribbean side. It's called the Corn Islands. And the best waves for surfing are on the Pacific side. You can also kite surf in the many lagoons in the middle of the country. So we started in the capital and largest city, Managua. I always like to check the capital for a bit when I arrive at a place. Managua is mostly corporate and it will be very local. Where I stayed, it was at Intercontinental. It was very centrally located with volcano views from the room, and I use also my free night status to stay there. The complimentary night that I got there comes from the ambassador program from Intercontinental Hotel Group. They have an ambassador program that we can pay 200 pounds a year, no, US actually, so a bit less than 200. And for that price, you get free night any weekend guaranteed late checkout which um, i find amazing if you have a late flight at least you can leave your hotel room up to 4 p.m yes 4 p.m you get guaranteed room upgrade some beverage a gift when you check in and also you get the top tier status in the program first meal when we arrived was the galopinto which is rice and beans with a fried egg and plantain on the side it's super delicious it's kind of a traditional meal that you should have in nicaragua you can wash it off with a glass of local rum the purest rum in the world is made there in nicaragua it's called actually flor de cana we visited the factory in the north it was really fun you can also have all sorts of cocktails for the price the unreal price of five usd uh, four pound i'm saying usd because everything is quoted in us dollar there so I, you can do the conversion if you want here is my list of nicaragua greatest activity and you can do that in the space of 10 days first go to leon drive three hours north from managua to spend a couple of days in leon you can hire a private driver for like 50 bucks you are like maximum five, four people in the car. Leon is very cute and charming, but very hot as well. It has a lot of history and a beautiful church on which you can walk on the whitewashed roof and have an amazing view of the city and surrounding volcano. Very picture perfect. Leon is also a great central point to visit the Flor de Cana, which is a rum factory. So also the place where people go to sledge down Cerro Negro. More on this later. <laughs> and you can relax, escape from the heat in La Penitas Beach, which is a very cute surfer beach on the Pacific side. A small museum I recommend visiting it when you're in Leon is Museo de la Revolución. This takes you through the history of Nicaragua, fighting to be freed from dictatorship. This museum is also a showcase of the revolutionary who fought the dictator called Samosa. The cool thing is that the tour is organized by the revolutionary themselves to tell you about their role during the conflict, their lives, during uh, that time there was also like an earthquake that happened at the time and it destroyed the city around 1972 so they'll tell you about their life during that time up to the overthrow of the Sandinista in the 1980s by the US government actually but now this national front is they are back in power they are known as the National Liberation Front which is a socialist party it's a pretty interesting history actually it makes you understand the meaning behind the graffitis and other signs 
sign on the street when you walk around um, that city. The main draw to Leon is to spend the morning visiting the extinct volcano Cerro Negro. You meet the tour guide in their office in town and then they drive you up to the bottom of the volcano and they give you all the gear you need. So it's this kind of thick onesie type of uniform with goggles to protect your eyes. The board from which you'll be sledging down the volcano is it's a wooden board with a cord to protect yourself. Very, very safe. You hike up about an hour um, with all the equipment on your back. There's no porter, sorry. Don't forget about the turning views because of course you have all this equipment on you and then you kind of forget to look around and take this picture when you sledge down it's actually very fun but also scary i was stopping so many times and didn't even go all the way down to be honest maybe i'll post a video on my website and need to find the gopro footage but it's quite <laughs> hilarious i like to try everything but once it involves my vertigo it's game over all this to say you must be very 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 brave to actually do that. But the interesting thing is that you are inside the crater of a volcano, which is quite a unique experience, I would say. And there's no risk of the volcano suddenly erupting or anything. So there's nothing to, to worry about that. Even so, the sand is quite warm, but that's due this because of the heat. So once you're done with Leon, I will suggest you to leave quite early the next morning and to reach a town called Rivas. From there, you catch a one-hour ferry to reach Omete. Tepe Island, which is actually the biggest island in the world. It's set in a lake of fresh water, Lake Nicaragua, and it's sitting between two volcanoes, Maderas and Concepcion. In fact, Ome, from Ome Tepe, Ome means two, the number two, and Tepe means eels. That's in the ancestral language of Nicaragua. It's known as a sacred island where gods used to live. So the heritage is still present through stone, idols, and petroglyphs scattered around the island. When you see this sculpture and everything, you understand the meaning. You can hike both volcanoes. It takes about eight hours to hike the Concepcion one and six hours to, to hike Maderas. But when you're up there, there's a beautiful view. And I guess it's worth it. <laughs> I would suggest spending three full days there. Everything in the island is eco-friendly, no plastic, no chemicals. They really want to preserve the island and the species that live in it. So mostly all hotels will be Ecologies. Hotel recommendation, I would recommend to stay at Totoko Eco Lodge in the town of Moyogalpa. This hotel is sitting in the middle of the tropical forest. It only works with renewable energy, so very eco-friendly hotel. Even in the room, some have normal toilets, but others have those compostable ones where you put this kind of sand on top of the toilet to clean it naturally. Yeah, it cleans the toilet in a natural way and doesn't smell or anything, so no, it was pretty Pretty good. They have these terrace with hammocks, volcano view, infinity pool, a cocktail bar set for the most beautiful sunset views. You can check the website for images so you can relate. Yes, actually, that's what I meant to say. There's a website now where you can find all the transcripts, videos, images of everything that I'm talking about in this podcast. Initially, the idea was to, to do some YouTube videos, but I didn't want to be repetitive. I'm already saying it here. I'm not going to we say it on YouTube. And also YouTube is super strict with creators. They want you to have this high quality 4K, 8K videos. So my 720, 1080 videos from pre-COVID times are not going to make the cut for me to monetize my channel. So I'm going to focus on YouTube for my London recommendation and my future travel trip. So don't unsubscribe. Please still subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm a perfectionist so I want that channel. Anyway, first world problem, I guess. Back to the tour. So you should hike one of the volcanoes. Maderas will be the one of choice. Supposedly easier and less steep than Concepcion. I went for Maderas. I said supposedly earlier because it was not an easy hike. So I cannot imagine how much harder hiking Concepcion is. This was long, slippery, and it took about six, seven hours. We couldn't even go to the very top because it had rained the day before and the surface was really slippery. Apparently some, some people 
like apparently run up that that volcano in the space of four hours. I mean, like completely crazy. But oh well, hey ho. That was not possible that day. Completely impossible. And I'm pretty fit, so I'm telling you. <laughs> During the hike, you can see some monkeys. They come and say hi, as well as other species such as butterfly, frogs, spiders. Anyway, <laughs> the next day, the guide took us for a kayaking tour in the mangrove to find some fish, turtles. Very unusual, unusual turtle. I've never seen this kind of turtle before. They look a bit like lizard type of turtle. But it was a very peaceful and pleasant paddle around. The rest of the time in the island was spent relaxing in the infinity pool and walk around town enjoying all the food and drinks as usual. Then, next... It was time to go back to mainland, almost mainland, to spend four days in Granada, which is the cultural capital of Nicaragua. You can stay in the city center, which is really beautiful, and with these colorful houses, horse ride, beautiful church, beautiful market, shopping, plenty of things to do. However, it's most recommended to stay on the Lake Nicaragua, in one of the little islands they call Isletas. These islands were created by the eruption of Mombacho volcano and the remains of the volcano created these these cones in the water actually. There are about 365 islands in total. Few are inhabited by private owners of hotels and the rest is mainly vegetation, monkeys, birds, snakes, (laughs) everything. I was touring ecologists in Nicaragua. In the Isleta I stayed at Ricaro. The idea came to me since the Peru trip. I really wanted to experience fully like a proper ecologist and see what they're offering. When I did my research, the ones in Nicaragua seemed to be ticking all the boxes at a reasonable price, actually. I always try to add something novel into my travels, unique way to do things. So, for example, when I went to Guatemala... I use a responsible travel company to organize the whole trip for me. So for once, I want it to be out of control. More on this in the next episode. Back to the lodge. This is so far the most amazing eco lodge I've ever been to. It's called Ricaro. In full transparency, the price for four nights, all transfers, tour, souvenir, laundry, totally needed considering the adventure and nature of this trip. Alcohol, souvenir, tips was about 2,000 US for two people. So 1,500 pounds. I mean, at the time, pre-COVID exchange rate. Not these days. You're not going to pay these prices now. So at the time. So it was a pretty good deal. So they come to get you at the point of Granada, put you on a boat for a 20 minute ride and when you you get there at the docking station there are people waiting for you with a refreshing drink and cold towels. So very first good impression. The ground is stunning, it's surrounded by trees, it's in the middle of the lake. Every element is made of stone and wood. They have an infinity pool with lake views as well. The rooms are this kind of private casita slash duplex with a living room, a rain shower, and kitchenette downstairs. And upstairs, you have the bedroom with 180 degrees views into the lake. You have free amenities such as open bar with local room, ice, water, soft drinks, snacks, eco-friendly beauty product, mosquito net, and most importantly, there's a breakfast starter that is delivered into your front deck every morning. It is made of coffee, tea, fresh juice of the day, fresh banana bread, fresh cakes. But you need to get there before the monkeys. <laughs> and if you obviously if you wake up too late, you can still go for a full breakfast at the main restaurant. Of course, the breakfast comes into a box, so it's closed. Probably the monkey won't be able to open it, but I'm sure they can. Staying on the food topic, the restaurant is turning. The food is organic, farm to table, locally sourced, basically from the forest in the next island. So breakfast is fresh egg, fruit, banana bread, or other type of cakes. For lunch or dinner, they have fresh fish with plantain, nakatamale, which is a corn dough filled with meat or vegetable, galopinto for breakfast, rondon, which was my favorite dish actually, is a seafood dish mixed with root vegetable and a coconut sauce. It's a very delicious stew actually. Next is the activity, which type of activity this hotel organized. They organize artisanal fishing trips on the lake, which is done with a net and you, or mostly actually your guide, catches the fish. You then go into the kitchen for a cooking class with what 
you you found in the lake. They have yoga classes on the deck with lake views in the morning. They also have in house massage with the, the same setting. You have everything that you could ask for. So you could totally spend the whole time in the hotel just relaxing, swimming, paddle boarding, kayaking, go bird watching, have a romantic dinner on the floating deck. But there's so much to do and see in the region that I was out pretty much all the time. One of the highlights of the trip was going to the town of Masaya to visit the local market. And then they take you into a jeep during the night to go and see an active volcano. You can actually see the lava at night. It's very hot and bright. It's also very touristy, but it's a very unique experience at the same time. You can only stay for less than 15 minutes because of the toxicity of the, of the sulfur. But this tour is 100% recommended. It must be one of the only places on earth where you can do that. That's why people go to, to Masaya to see this phenomenon. Next, another thing, fun thing that the hotel organized is to do the zip lining tour into the canopy forest. We had us fun. You just go zip line up and down, Superman, everything that you do during the zip line. So that makes up of a fun morning. After that exhausting adventure to calm down the adrenaline, you go for a plunge in the Apoyo Lagoon which is the deepest crater lake in Central America. You can swim in the refreshing water and uh, sit down with a nice view while uh, enjoying some, some lunch. And then at the end of the trip, definitely spend a day in Granada to take in all the culture, even two days, because then you can go a bit outside of town in an indigenous village called San Juan de Oriente. It is the pottery capital of Nicaragua. They have these craft pottery oven all around the town. Uh, locals in that town have won many awards for their ceramic and pottery. So it was the best place to take a pottery class and bring back my craft as a souvenir. The town is small. You can walk up and down the town within 5-10 minutes. But if you go into shops and hang out and everything, you maybe visit it within one or two hours. I always find it funny <laughs> when you go into this tour because the tour guide always take you to a shop or a site because they want to help their friends. So they always say, oh, this is the best place to go into. But this one was a bit unusual because he took us to this indigenous woman in this old house. Apparently she's, no, but not apparently, she was a card reader, a handline reader. She's well known for saying things that are pretty accurate. To be honest, I don't remember what she said. It must have been all positive. Actually, they never say anything negative, otherwise they don't have a business. <laughs> it was a quite interesting detour from the tour guide. That's it. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the experiences you get when, when you travel, and I love it. Ah, actually, I remember one thing she said. She said that one day I will be very creative, launch a podcast, and my listeners will give me a five-star review. So, guys, that's it. Up to you. That was Nicaragua. And we'll end this podcast with a quote for the adventurers from Martin Luther King. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, roll. But by all means, keep moving. Thanks for listening and live inspired. Thank you.